Today, we're gonna to talk about my favorite yeast nutrients, and we're gonna do it in a tier list. Let's get started. So if you don't know what a tier list is, it's basically just a list of things and you rank them and say this one's the best this one's the worst this is in between now this is um something that's blown up as of recently um, a lot in video game culture and other places but there's tier lists everywhere today we're making a tier list using yeast nutrients so let's discuss the different yeast nutrients we have to choose from so the first nutrient option is for made k next we have dimonium phosphate or dap as we call it for made o um, I have thrown in some fruit, like fruit skins, because in my research, some people claim that uh, yeast, or, or that, excuse me, uh, fruit skins can be yeast nutrient. So there's that. There's raisins, of course. Um, tea, that's another one of those that people have said is a good or a possible nutrient source. And yeast holes. Now, I'll talk about each one real fast, and then we'll talk about the actual... Well, I'll give you my opinion, oh, by the way, opinion alert, this is all an opinion of which one's my favorite to use or and which one's my least favorite, so to speak. So uh, first of all, Fermaid K. Now I have some notes because I want to give you the exact thing. Some of these have crazy things. And Fermaid K is a mixture of organic and inorganic um, nutrient for yeast. So it has, it's a complex yeast nutrient that contains a blend of assimil assimilable, oof, amino acids from inactivated blah, blah 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 has a bunch of things in it you can read them there um it has what's important about this is it has dimonium phosphate in it its brother is a little different fermaid o fermaid o is all organic it has um a is fermaid o is a blend of inactivated yeast fractions it rich in organic nitrogen it does not contain DAP. That's the difference, really, between Fermate O and K. It just has a high amount of uh, organic nitrogen. Dimonium phosphate is pretty much straight uh, nitrogen. It is just a... a uh, people consider it more of a chemical in a lot of ways. And um, it is one that is really easy to get your nitrogen to the yeast. So that's one commonly used. It's also one of the cheapest to buy. Next we have fruit skins. Fruit skins are often considered to be, or sometimes considered to be yeast nutrient because within the fruit skin there are nutrients and some nitrogen and, and all these other complex nutrient sources that the yeast need. So there's that. Raisins, that's one. Same thing like the fruit skins. Um, I see raisins thrown into lots of meads and that's not to say that they can't do something, um, but people consider them in that category. Tea is one that people have said that tea is a nutrient source, and I haven't seen it a lot. And honestly, I don't think it's very, um, I don't think it's super high, but I don't want to spoil my answers yet. And the last one is yeast holes. Yeast holes are autolyzed or dead yeast, or as you can see here, essentially the remains of dead yeast cells. Um, they can help fermentations by absorbing toxic byproducts of fermentation in wine or mead. Let's get to the tier list now. So, I'm going to go ahead and rank these starting at the bottom. I do not believe... I'm going to go and start with fruit skins. I think in the D tier, fruit skin are not really doing much. I don't think that there's a lot of value to fruit skins to provide enough nitrogen content. The truth is, they can provide some nitrogen content, but you got to put a lot of fruit skins in there. And... If you're simply trying to add the nutrient side, um, you're also getting flavors. So unless you're intentionally trying to get apple and nutrient, it's, you know, the skins aren't really that valuable. That's like a D tier for me. Um, next, I'm going to go, uh, actually, I'm just going to go on the list here. Fermade K. Fermade K is that mixture of inorganic and organic nutrient has DAP. Now, the thing that I like about Fermade K is that it has the DAP. It has some organic sources and inorganic. Now, the DAP side can be a little bit tough. Some people don't like using DAP because it can be harmful for your yeast if you introduce it in a poor timing. Um, so you have to know when to use this. But I would say Fermade K is super good. In fact, I'm, I'm going to go ahead... Uh, hmm, I honestly haven't thought too much about these. I'm kind of also deciding... In the moment. Well, I'm going to start with A tier. I think that might be an A, 
uh, I don't know. It's borderline S tier. It's really good. It's not in the middle. It's right, definitely at the top. Um, let's see. Dimonium phosphate. Again, DAP is nitrogen, essentially, for the yeast. It is the cheapest and best source. Uh, I would say... Oh, this is tough. I'm going to start B tier. That might change here in a second. It's it's very good. I like using DAP. Uh, it's also cheap. <laughs> Fermate O is the organic source. Is this... Here's where the competition starts. Is Fermate K better than Fermate O? The organic side can get nitrogen. It's more... Hmm... Okay, I'm gonna, yes. So I'm putting this in the S tier because it's fully organic, meaning that there is organic nitrogen coming from it. There's no chance that you can include this in a, well, you could include it in a bad manner and put it in wrong, but you're less likely to put it in wrong. You're less likely to damage any cells during the yeast reproduction phrase phase of things. Uh, this might move though. This is not solid yet. Raisins, this guy. Is this a valuable nutrient source? It is not the worst. It is a little bit useful, but it has its drawbacks. It does add flavor. It does add mouthfeel and body and change in that regard. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in C tier. Not really very great. I just wouldn't use it as a nutrient source, um, maybe as a flavoring or a bodybuilding thing possibly, but nutrient side, it's C tier. It does something, but not really much. T, I'll be honest, what the heck? I don't, don't think tea does anything for uh, meat. I think there are some um, minerals or some sources of possible nutrient found in tea, but you would have to use a lot to really provide tea, to make tea be a valuable nutrient for your yeast. So I would put that really low. I would not even consider that. I included this because I'd seen it in other places and I just, I don't know. I would not use tea as a, a yeast nutrient. Now we have yeast hulls. Yeast hulls are the dead yeast and they're up there. I mean, they're, ooh, this is tough. Cause yeast hulls are, are good. Now they're, they're basically just dead yeast, which is autolyzed yeast, which is useful to the, the <laughs> alive yeast. And um, I think it's, it's a more organic source, of course. It doesn't have any dimonium phosphate, but like when you consider the, ooh, I don't wanna put it down there yet. Uh, I'm just gonna put it in the middle for now. When you consider like Fermade K has um, autolyzed yeast in sterols and unsaturated fatty acids, magnesium sulfate, thiamine, folic acid, all of these things that are like extra, fla not flavorings, but extra nutrient uh, complexity things. That's a terrible way to say it. But uh, I think that that definitely adds value to Fermade K, which again, might be changing things here in a second. I don't know that yeast holes have all the same stuff. They're just dead yeast, and dead yeast don't necessarily have all of that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it in the B tier. Now this I'm not pleased with this yet. I think if and again opinion, I think if I was choosing this, I would put Fermade K and Fermade O in the same playing field. Then I would move dimonium phosphate to a tier i think that one is because it's cheap and accessible and honestly very good people have made amazing meads using dimonium phosphate as the nutrient source um i think that puts it up a tier is it the best no if you use it in a wrong way you can definitely get yourself in trouble but it's still good um and what i mean by using it in the wrong way is when you introduce a yeast nutrient in the beginning of fermentation, there's the reprodu reproduction uh, phase for the yeast. And that is the time where they're building up their cell walls and they're doing all these things to get ready to chew through all of the gravity. During that phase, if you add DAP too early, meaning that let's say while the yeast are trying to reproduce and you add DAP in, that could actually damage the cell walls, which then can adversely affect the fermentation. So if you include DAP, you wanna make sure and do it generally 24 hours later, maybe one third sugar break, like the Fermade K says it specifically on there, wait till the one third sugar break, essentially, two thirds sugar break, sorry. And um, that's to keep the yeast from getting damaged. So. Dimonium phosphate is probably more strong than yeast hulls. Okay, if I were picking an ultimate one to always use, I would 
I would probably go with Firm Aid K and make sure I do it in the right way, of course, wait till a two thirds sugar break. Um, I think you could use a combination of things. Now, there are other yeast nutrients out in the world. There's one called Firmax. Um, I haven't included that because I don't know how available it is. I know a lot of these are available to people. Um, there are undoubtedly some I have missed, but I would use Firmaid K and make sure to use it in the right way. You could use a combination. You could use Firmaid O in the beginning that doesn't have the DAP and that could get it going. Add your Firmaid K later on and uh, that would be helpful. Um, the big thing here is you want to use a nutrient source that is going to help your yeast ferment and that whole the process of fermentation is pretty tough on yeast especially because there's there's just a lot going on and you're putting them in a stressful environment so giving them nutrient sources help this is my tier list this is my rendition of it now what i'm gonna do I'm putting this down in the comments. This is a website I'm using to do this. What you can do is you can fill this out in your own way. I would love to see and hear what you guys have for your tier list. You can get on and actually go through and do it yourself and give me your opinion. This is mine. Tea and fruit skins, pretty sucky, not great um, nutrient. Uh, raisins, C tier, just a little bit above they do something but not enough to give a lot of value yeast holes are getting there they're powerful ish um there are better nutrient sources though uh the dimonium phosphate a tier we talked about that in an s tier probably the best in my opinion fermate o and fermate k again check out check the link down in the description below if you want to also do this nutrient tier list if you have other tier list ideas related to mead making, send them my way. I would love to do it. This is a fun way to talk about different aspects of mead making, and I hope you'll join me for a future uh, tier list or just other video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.